It's 8 o'clock. Time for hot talk. Yeah. Make sure the radio dials in the right spot. You know it 97.1, is. 97.1. Time for ear fun. What? With my two main men, Conway and Whitman. 8 o'clock. Time for hot talk. Yeah. Make sure the radio dials in the right spot. 97.1. Time for ear fun with my main man, Conway and Whitman. 8 o'clock rolls around putting on C and Dub. Yeah. This stuff is hot. Going pouring me some Jewish bub. Man, we got Gina, Jerry, Tim, and Brian naming them tunes. <laughs> and later on, we're going to play some Family Feud. It's 8 o'clock. Time, time for hot talk. talk. Make sure the radio is in the right, right spot. 97.1. Time for ear fun, fun with my two main men, Conway and Whitman. And Whitman. 8 o'clock, time for hot, hot talk. talk. Make sure that the radio dial's in the right, right spot. 97.1, time for ear fun with my two main men, Conway, Conway and Whitman. Whitman. All these Jews want is three hours a night. In between commercial, I'm going to blaze that menorah bright. Blaze it you up! You got a joke? Make like a slap? Don't be a mumser. Pick up the phone fast. 520 971 520-971-WO. 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 It's 8 o'clock. Time for hot talk. Make sure the radio dial's in, in the, the right, right spot. spot. 97.1. One. Time for ear fun. fun. With my two main men, Conway and Whitman. 8 o'clock. Time for hot, hot talk. talk. Make sure the radio dial's in the right, right spot. spot. Time for ear fun. 97.1. 97.1. With my two main men, Conway and Whitman. Friday night rolls around the Shabbos to y'all. Will Whitman be there tonight or give Conway a call? OCD freak loving his dogs. Popping that will brooch in like Hanukkah girl, fool. Timmy's betting the ponies, losing the shekels. Sophia sitting there saying, <laughs> Oh, Babu. Oh, Babu. Oh, oh Babu. Oh, 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 Babu. It's 8 o'clock. Time, time for, for hot talk. talk. Make sure the radio dial's in, in the, the right spot. spot. 97.1. 1. Time for ear fun. With my two main men, Conway and Whitman. 8 o'clock. Time, time for hot talk. talk. Make sure the radio dial's in the right spot. Definitely. 97.1. Time for ear fun. Yeah. With my main man, Conway and Whitman. Big Jimmy! Yeah, keep it kosher, keep it kosher. Keep it kosher, Jews. Put on that unit. We out like overalls. All right, everybody. It is the Conway and Whitman Show, and we are live on 97.1 Free FM. Tim Conway Jr. and Brian David Whitman. Nice to see you, dude. Timmy Conway Jr., man. Look at you, man. I said it, man. God damn it, man. I said it, man. All right, we'll talk about that uh, opening song in a bit here. But uh, yeah, by you, the way, are you Jewish? I'm not, but the two guys that did it are. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. so that's where the Yiddish influence comes from. Yeah, Jerry Wachowski and uh, Adam Adam Macadocious. Yes, they are a couple of uh, a couple of rapping Jews. That should be their name. The name of their coming in off their self titled CD. Here are the rapping Jews. The two biggest disappointments to that very, very. Uh, popular religion that that does nothing <laughs> but turn out respectable people in this community. Right, and for some reason, these two guys uh, embarrassed. Maybe have taken that religion back ten years. Yeah, I, if ear fun m- rhymed with wit mun, that's what they, that's what I told him. I said, like, "You got to change the, the you got <laughs> ear fun with my main mun wit- Conway and wit mun." Yeah, they could have said Whitman. Yeah, they're going to change it. Yeah, because ear right. fun, Whitman. Yeah. All right, this is what we do when we come back from vacation. We uh, try to figure out how much Brian Whitman lost in Las Vegas. All right, gang. And um, I was there. Yeah, I was there probably you know, not the same time as you were there. No, I had a domestic, Tim. Yes, uh, you did. Yeah, I had a domestic. I didn't want to get into this, but, uh, you know, <laughs> this show is nothing. Can we talk about it on the air? You know what? I was going to say no, but what the All F? Right. Let's just talk about it because I, I find this show is more interesting when we talk about it. By the way, do you have my credit card? <laughs> I have no idea my credit card. No, I don't. All right. Well, anyway, I'm missing it. Which one? The Black American Express? I don't want to say, but I am yeah. missing a credit card. So, Gina, do you have his credit card? Can someone... No. Can no, some, I don't. Can someone check Wilshire Boulevard for a no <laughs> limit American Express card, please? <laughs> you right. really don't have it, huh? Uh, yeah, I have no idea where it is. All right, All you're right. fine. Yeah. That won't freak you out too much. No, I'll be fine for the next three hours. All I had right. a domestic. Here's, here's, here's what happened. Uh, now, I had a domestic about a month ago. Uh, was it six weeks ago? I don't know. It was so severe, I had to take the night off. You remember that. Right. But by the way, the days of me taking the night off. Are over. Are over. Wow. Yeah. I've turned over a new leaf. I think I'm a little bit healthier. 
And, uh, for example, today— Was it the troop surge in Iraq that's brought you back into Well, hey, look, you know, so, you know, 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 um, <laughs> the surge is working. <laughs> they straighten you out? Hey, look, you know, so, you know, so I had Al Gore over at the White House today. I noticed that. <laughs> well, so this is what it looks like on the inside. <laughs> not too uncomfortable for you. Yeah, it's one not of too them. weird, right? How are you? Good to see you. Have a seat anywhere you like. Uh, just not at that big desk. <laughs> No, uh, I was, uh, I had a domestic, uh, but no, like today, for example, two years ago, I would have taken today off. A year ago, I would have taken today off because I've had a little um, problem. All right. Uh, I've had a, is this wild? I've, uh, I've spent a little time in the restroom. Ah, ass is on fire. So, but, uh, so, but I'm fine now. I think, I think I'm okay. All right. But, so I had a domestic about six weeks ago. And you had another one over Thanksgiving. Right. Well, when I, the night I spoke to you, I had a domestic. Right. And I apologize for the emotion and all of that. Okay. You know, in advance, I would like to apologize to you. For, but I get, um, you know, I'm a very emotional. I am totally emo. Right. Did, did I do enough for you that night in talking with you? or? I think you were pretty helpful until... I had to press on? Right. Until you gave me some line that you were with somebody. I was yeah. at uh, Chevy's in Encino. I was meeting a couple of old friends there. Right. I think we talked for 10 minutes, didn't we? Yeah, I think it was 10 minutes. Yeah, see? All right. So, yeah, you were very helpful. You were helpful because, yeah, you were helpful. Ah, Bubbo. I just gave you a lot of those. Anyway, Whitman calls me up because yeah. I called him to see if he was in Vegas. We we're going to be in Vegas at the same time. Right. And, 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 and you actually called the hotel operator where I stay and where you stay and said, may I speak with, may I be connected to the room of Brian Whitman? And, and they, they connected me to your room. And dude, I was not, I swear to God, I was not there. I, I'm, I'm not saying you were, I'm just saying they connected me to your room. Yeah, well, get so I So I call Whitman, and he's not in Vegas, but he's hysterical. <laughs> right, but what like, I, what I. Like a major <laughs> meltdown. Right, in the car. Were you, you were crying like that in the car? Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, I mean, I wasn't... I thought somebody... But I wasn't hysterical. I was choked up. Well, okay. I mean, was I... I don't think I was hysterical. All right. All right, whatever. But, you but were... here's what I was doing. I was driving to Vegas on my own. I was going to go on my own. I said, F it. I'm going by myself. I don't care. I don't need anyone. You know, any, any, any dude, any woman, anyone. I can go to Vegas and have a good time on my own. Right. Uh, but what happened was... The domestic dispute, the argument before I left the house, uh, continued with cell phone conversations on my trip on the 15. Actually, I don't think I made it to the 15. And there was some, there was, I was threatened. And you know what my Achilles heel is. Those dogs. Right. So a threat was leveled at me. That one of the dogs is not really mine. You I don't have her years ago. human children. Excuse me, Tim. Jerry played a, played a uh, sound effect in the middle of your uh, conversation. I'm not going to repeat it. No, you have to. The audience didn't hear it, and I didn't hear it. I'm not going to repeat it. If he wants to play uh, sound effects over what I say, no, I'll give it. All right, um, but, but you bought this dog with her four years ago? Right. All right. Right. And now she's threatening to take that dog to Seattle. R right. Well, she, well, I don't want to get too into it, please, Tim. But uh, <laughs> please, you want to give I zip codes, for God's sake? <laughs> so she, I'm just trying to let the audience right. know what's going on. Now she split, and I kept the dogs. Right. What's the dog's name? Uh, you know, I, I, George. Okay. All right. And he's a Yorkie, and he's so cute. And I'd give my life for him. You know that. I've already said that. Right. I would jump in front of a train for these dogs. Right. And, I, and you know I mean that. I, I, I absolutely believe you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, please. As a matter of fact, we should test that theory <laughs> down at Grand Central. <laughs> There's a Union Station here? Union Station. Right, Union Station. Grand Central Terminal is in New York. <laughs> but I could go back to New York. grab one of those dogs and do a test run at, right. at Union Station with you. Will Whitman jump in front of a speeding train? Find out tonight with Conway and Whitman. On a very special And you would, too. I, absolutely, I would. To save them, I would jump on the tracks to, save, to get them off the tracks. Right. This is what would happen. That dog would be on the tracks. You jump in to save that dog. You'd be get demolished by the train. It would be okay if I saved the dog. And I'd just be, you know, smoking a cigarette on the side going, what an idiot. I'll tell you, man. 
God damn it, man. Somebody you see what just happened there? I tell you, man, my last partner uh, jumps off a stage, and this, this mother in front of a train, jumps man. off a subway platform. Oh, bah, boom. Mm. Bah, boom. All right, so. All right, so the threat that was leveled at me was, I am taking this dog. So you go to Vegas, and you do what you want, but when you get back, this dog is not going to be here. Uh-oh. I started to cry. Right. <laughs> and that's when you called me? Uh, or shortly after that, right? Right. I collected myself. I thought, didn't you call me? Didn't I answer I your phone? I don't know. I don't know how, how it happened. How I, it shook down. I can check the phone. I think you called me because you were wondering where I was, if I was in Vegas or not. Mm, I think you may have been returning my call. But either way, it, it, right. either way, uh, I came unglued in the car, which is not, is not, first off, is not safe. Right. So I pulled over to collect myself because that's not safe to drive like that, to be all crazy. Sure. So I pulled over to the side. I, pulled, I got off the freeway, and I collected myself, and I just, you know, relax, you know, because you can't be driving with that kind of emotion. Talk to Don't you. Don't drink and cry. Don't drive and cry. I was not drinking, Tim. Oh. oh yeah. Don't drink. Don't drive and cry. Don't cry and drive. No, don't be emo. Don't be, all right, okay. Don't be emo and, cr- and drive. Okay. That, uh, you, you, all right, go ahead. Uh, Tim, please do not suggest to the audience that I was drinking. I'm not saying you were drinking. I, I was trying to figure out the new slogan that you should do a PSA for. Don't uh, cry and drive. Right, we had that little PSA sound. Yeah. Hi, hi, I'm Brian Whitman. I've learned from personal experience not to be emo and drive. And what I mean by that is don't cry and drive. <laughs> it puts you and everyone else at risk. <laughs> Can you log that as a PSA? You slide into a family of eight, wipe them all out. What happened? Uh, I was crying. What? I, I was on my way to Las Vegas, and I got totally emo. I wiped out a family of four headed to Barstow. Please, don't cry and drive. <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, I then did the calculation. Go to Vegas by myself. Be depressed out of my mind, come home, and is this a real threat? I mean, is the dog really not there? So I turned the car around, and I went back home. Wow. And you, you got back, then the dog was fine. Of course. I got back, and I was said, and, and this was said to me, what are you doing here? I said, quote, I live here. <laughs> <laughs> the odd couple. <laughs> That's what was said to me. What, All right. What, so the dog's fine. Uh, the dog is fine. Everything is fine. And and guess what? I am very good at clearing up domestic disputes. I'm I'm a peace. I'm really like a I'm really like a like a 2007 Jimmy Carter. I can bring uh, warring factions together, even if I am one. And uh, so what I did was I used my powers of uh, persuasion, and uh, what I tried to do. Is Jimmy Carter giving a speech? You know, I don't find this funny. Yeah, recently, is he talking to yeah. Habitat for Humanity? Yeah. Recently on this program, it has become fashionable to depict the former president as a Nazi. And I want to go on record and say I don't. It bothers you. Right? It bothers me tremendously. It bothers me. <laughs> All right. Because this is the time of year. To, right, we won't do it very often. To give to Habitat for Humanity. All right. So you go to you know you you. So I, 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 I pack it. I, I patch it all up. I mean, I'm I'm a really good arguer. I mean, right. I, I can really get into it, uh, but I can patch it up pretty well too. I know what to Good say to patch it up. All right. Now you you uh, went to Vegas. So the next day we went to Vegas. Didn't do well. No. By the way, I've discovered it's very tough to go to Las Vegas with a two year old. <laughs> And because of that, our trip was cut short. <laughs> now, you used to go when she was like one. When and- she was six months old or a year old, it was great because she would sit in the stroller and fall asleep and you could hold her and carry her around. Now she wants to run around. Oh, look. And that's what people, you know, that's no, what kids look. shouldn't be doing in no. Vegas. Hey, look, no, that's what they do. You know, these two-year-olds, they run around. <laughs> right. And they want to play slot machines. And, oh, you know, they can't do that. You know, yeah, that's, that's re- what she did. She no. grabbed the slot machines. <laughs> well, she's learning early. She went up and grabbed uh, a, uh, a a blackjack table and was, like, reaching up on the table to chips. Oh, Tim, they, they, they won't tolerate that. That's what they said. 
<laughs> okay, that's what I figured. That's why we left. We were supposed to be there on Thursday, and we left on uh, Tuesday. You'd be happy to know I saw no gay shows. Usually I go and Is I that see. Right? Yeah, I see like Barry Manilow or Celine Dion. Right. Turns out they were both not performing, so I couldn't see it. Uh, yeah. You didn't see the uh, Thunder from Down Under, the Australian no, have, topless guys? I have never seen that show. Now stop this. Right. I have never seen that. I didn't even see, see my friend Louis Anderson. Wow. Oh. I perform- At the Excalibur? No, oh, that's right. I perform at Excalibur. Why don't you come and see me? I would have comped your tickets. How many? What, whatever. That's rude that you didn't go see him. You know, that's so rude. Huh? Well, hey, I will- it's Wild Willie Anderson. Hey, Willie. What's going on, Whitman? I would have, uh, I would have, um... I, I will see him eventually at right. his at, at the. You Excalibur. better see it quick. I probably should. As it turns out, Tim, I probably should probably go tomorrow. I probably. What in the world does that mean? I'm just saying that they, you know, Vegas is always, uh, you know, it's constantly in motion. He's fine. Uh, what I probably, sh- in retrospect, I probably should have seen 15 shows and just gone from show to show to show right. to show to show to show to eat to eat to eat to show to show to show and have avoided that area. You know those tables with the felt, you know, the the felt on top and the, they right. p- dispense cards? Right. I should have stayed away from those. All right. So how much did you lose? Well, do you want to make it a contest? That's what we All right, usually do. Do we have a giveaway? Do we have any giveaways? Can you? Nothing. God damn it. All right. Um, I'm going to give away a, a Christmas card I got, or a Thanksgiving card I got, signed um, by Ted Ziegenbush. Uh, Ted I... Ziegenbush is over on... Uh, the Fish. No. Yes, he, he no, is. He, no, he's not. He's on... Um... No, he's not on coast anymore. Yes, he is. He's... He's on, he does evenings he... on the coast. No, he's... he's Trust on... me, he's on the coast now. I thought he went to The Fish. No, he went back to the coast. He did? Yeah. Well, oh, that's a good move for him. But him and his wife, April, sent me a Christmas card. Or a Thanksgiving card. The only Thanksgiving card I got is from Ziegenbush. I didn't think people sent Thanksgiving cards. It says, Happy Thanksgiving. When we take time to count our blessings each year, we always think of you. Can I read it like Ted? Ted and April, yeah. Ted. Ted. Happy Thanksgiving. When we take time to count our blessings each year, we always think of you. All right. And then right under it, it's... um, if uh, for all your real estate needs, oh, are you kidding? Yeah, I guess he's uh, a mortgage consultant. I'm Ted Ziegenbush. I am on Coast 103.5 in the evening, and during the day, I'm showing properties. Matter of fact, I have an open house in Pacoima tomorrow. It's right before my shift, and you know we're playing 24 seven Christmas music on Coast 103.5. We're at 63 degrees along the coast. I got to rip his address off it, though, so it's going to be part of a card. So you get Ted Ziegenbush's card to me for Thanksgiving if you guess how much Brian Whitman lost in Las Vegas. Now, why did Ted Ziegenbush send you a card and not me a card? That's kind I'm of friends so- with a guy. I go to the racetrack with a dude. Oh, he's a track dude? Yeah, he's, a, he's one of the best handicappers on the planet. Are you kidding? No. He's a Christian. He was on well, a well, there's the, some Christians well, out hold there. Hold on a second. He was on the Christian radio station. Doesn't he know that Jesus went into the temples and overturned the tables when there was gambling going on? Nah, I missed that. Bit. Oh, he missed that 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 scripture. He's, it's like your oh. religion where you pick and choose. Get out know? of here! Pick, I'm pluck this, this, this. I don't like this. I don't like that. I like this. I don't like. Excuse that. me, Tim. I am not like that. You know what I did? You know what I did yesterday? I hung a cross in my home. Good for you. All right, that's the uh, the, the first sign to uh, being uh, permanently single. All right, folks, how <laughs> and and a, a wild odor that comes along with that. Get the heck out of here! Yeah, you know what People, I? I think it was uh, Adam Carolla that said that guys that have more than six crosses in their house. There's also a funky odor in there, too. By the way, there are not more than six crosses in I my know, but, the, the, but There's but, one above the fireplace. I know, but for, with, every time, you know, a, a journey starts with one step, young yeah. man. I find it outrageous, may I just say, with all due respect to Ted Ziegenbush, who I like a lot on the air, and I'm also a good friend of, uh, I think Mike Paul Sacalaridis is very good. Uh, he does the midday show. Right. Um, but he's never heard that term. I'm sorry, did I say his name wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. Mike's... Yeah, Mike Ball Sacalaridis. Oh, Bobo. 
All right. It's third grade. Right. Well, it's like you. Where's the, uh, the, the recess bell? Yeah, it's like Mel Brooks here calling me Brian Espen. Hey, dude. Hey, Espen. Hey, <laughs> yeah, man. Or Witless. Patting himself. Yeah, Brian Witless on the air there. I am surrounded by Mel Brooks and right. uh, Carl Reiner here, who, you know. Yeah. And, and but, you come in with uh, Shecky Green's act. Well, but let me just say, let me just say that. Uh, who are you, Don Rickles? I, I find it outrageous, I will simply say. That Ted Ziegenbush, it's 64 degrees along the coast, that he would do the morning show on a religious radio station. Where the where it's called the fish, as in oh please give him a break. N- excuse me, where and and Christ, you know, he turned the water to wine and the loaves of bread f- to stone and, and right. uh, stone to bread and I mean he fed everybody. Jesus put together a hell of a Thanksgiving meal with a couple of stones and some uh, sprite. That this guy would be a handicapper. He's a great. Him and his kid are both great handicappers. Do you think? That, All right, come on. Let's no, just. No, no, no. Do, let, do you think the Jesus freaks who listened to him on the fish knew that he was after his they shift? They don't care. Going to Santa Anita after the his shift. The rest of the fish is going there too. All right. Okay. Let's take some calls here. How much? How much did Brian Whitman lose in Las Vegas? And the winner gets an autographed um, Thanksgiving card from Ted and April Ziegenbush. The Ziggenbushes. Tim Conway Jr. and Brian Whitman's going to sign this as well. Would you like me to sign that right yeah, now? Yeah, sign that, will you? Yeah, they'll share. All right, 520-9710. How much did Brian Whitman lose in Las Vegas? No, I'd like to sign Ted's rack. 520-9710 and 888-520-9710. It is the Conway and Whitman Show, and we're live on 97.1 Free FM. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Conway and Whitman Show, and we're live at 97.1 Free FM. Our little buddy Brian Whitman went to Las Vegas. And by the way, if anything I said in the last segment offended the Ziegenbush family, and I mean... It, he's got a, a thick skin. All right, let's uh, take some calls here. How much did Brian Whitman lose in Las Vegas? Marissa in San Clemente, you're on 97.1 Free FM. What's up, you guys? Hey. Hi, Marissa. How are you? Good. Good. Happy holidays, and let me be the first to say... Merry Christmas, if that's what you celebrate. Merry Christmas to you, too. Thank you. How much, did Whitman, how much you. did Whitman lose? Um, I'm thinking he lost, I don't know, maybe about five grand or so. Uh, uh, that That is an incorrect that's, guess. I'm sorry, that is wrong. It's higher than five grand. Eric and Playa Del Rey, you're on the air. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Hi, Eric. Uh, hi, with the $15,000 lost last time, nah. I think it's got to be more and be seventeen. All right, that's uh, incorrect. It's lower than seventeen. And by the way, if I made you tell my history, uh, the caller is correct. Last time it was fifteen thousand. However, two years ago this Thanksgiving, just two years ago uh, this weekend, this past weekend, it was ten thousand. Right. That's when everybody got uh, juked on their Christmas gift. Please, Tim. But my last trip was the worst trip before this trip. Uh, without revealing any other information, uh, up until that time was the worst trip ever when I did lose, indeed, 15, 15 grand. And was cut off by every credit card company I've ever done business oh, with. Is that right? Yeah, I actually slid my card and they said, it's over. <laughs> and I called the, and said, please pick up the phone. <laughs> and I picked up the phone and they said, you're out. I mean, you've hit your... <laughs> you've hit your uh, you should have called me. I, I could have said you no, I, I was done. I, I said, you know what? I better go to the room at this point. Dan, you better go to a meeting at that point. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Robert in Norco. You're on 97.1 Free FM. How much did Whitman lose in Vegas? Uh, what's going on, guys? How are you guys doing tonight? All right, hold Hi. on one second. Yeah. Jerry, is it that bank that's that's cracking? No. Or is it his, uh, all their do, do cell you have phones? Some, is there something in front of the thing over there? No, let's try this one. Yeah, try the other bank. Robert, bro. you there? Yeah, I'm still here, guys. All right. Is that a little bit better? Yeah. Robert, right. Robert, can you count to five for us, please? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Yeah, that okay. lab sounds good. All right, how much did uh, Whitman lose? Well, I was guessing a little bit lower earlier, but after that last caller, um, I'm figuring about $7,800. No, it's less than $7,800. It's between five grand and $7,800. $7,800? What do you think? I have a gambling problem? Sal in Altadena, you're on 97.1. Hello, Tom. Hello, Sal. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, oh, Merry Christmas, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas to Merry you. Merry Christmas, Conway Thank and Whitman. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Uh, I'm going to have to go with uh, Never get too, in too early for that, I guess. 
6,500? 55? 65. 65. Yeah. Ah, you just missed it, but you're low, dude. Mm. Ah, 65 is a good guess. Is a very solid guess. Yeah, I'd throw a C note at that. Fred in Simi Valley, you're on 97.1 Free FM. 66.25. Are you a nut? (laughs) Jesus Christ. Hey, no, it's, it's lower than 6625, why would you, why and it's would, higher than 6500. Why would you throw a 25 on there? I don't know. Warren and Downey are on 97.1. How much did Whitman lose? Uh, I'm guessing probably 6550. No, 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 no. Wow. A lot of dummies play this game. A lot of guys that uh, are batteries are worn out in their calculator. Taylor on the 101. You're on 97.1 Free FM. Hello, Louie. Louie Anderson. Hi, Taylor. How are you? Good. Do you gamble? What game were you playing? Was it craft or no, blackjack? No, no. I was playing slots and blackjack. Yeah. I'm going to have to go with $7,200 no. American. Nah, no. Dude, you're a moron. And by the way, I only, just uh, for further reference for those who are online to play, I only deal in American currency. I don't, I don't gamble with euros. All right, here the, here's the uh, phone number. I'm going to give you a major hint on this one because there's a lot of dumb guys out there. 520-9710 and 888 Here comes ex- the hint. Here's, here's the major hint. Okay. It's exactly $100 more than $6,500. All right? Let's see if you guys could figure that out. All right. Ryan in Riverside, you're on 97.1 Free FM. What's up? State 6600. Hey, congratulations, dude. All right, hold on one sec. He gets the uh, autographed uh, Thanksgiving card from Ted and April Ziegenbush. Tim Conway Jr. and Brian Whitman, all autographed. Well, them. and it, it's a card from Ted Ziegenbush, one of the uh, one of really L.A. Radio's finest broadcasters. And uh, it's really uh, quite a beautiful card. I mean, if you have a lot of whiteout at your house, you could white out everything that Ted and April wrote in the card. You could white out his real estate business card. And you could maybe send this to... And there's could, a recipe down there at the right, bottom. You'd have to white that out. Well, I guess you could keep that. All right, I got something to play that's going to make you angry. Why are you, do the, why are you doing this to me a half hour back from vacation? Why? why wh- I just feel like it, okay? All right, this is... Um, what is it? All right, Randy Wang has come into the studio. What's going on Hey, with Brian, you? I know this is a bad time. All right, Randy Wang is with us. He's uh, one of our producers uh, here. What the hell is going on here? Brian, I know this is a bad time because you just lost, you lost $6,600, but I have to tell you, you owe me $500. <laughs> I absolutely do not owe you $500. You owe me $500. Now, here's what happened. I went home no, to no, think. No, 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 explain. no. Randy, I absolutely do not owe you $500. Can I explain? I think you do. Here's what happened. Um, I went home for Thanksgiving, and my parents listened to the show, and they were listening to the Name That Tune with me and you doing Michael Jackson and the one we did after that. So I come home, and they say, where's the $500? I say, what are you talking about? Yeah, then they th- play back for me on the podcast that at the very end of our Michael Jackson fight, you challenged me to the rematch, and you said, if I beat you, you'd give me $500. That's outrageous. I never said it. You never said it? This tape will uh, tell the, the jury otherwise. Uh, Turn the audio vault on there, Bubba. I have no idea. What, uh, that, that's uh, It's that, on. It's uh, already on. That's untrue. I never said that. Uh, oh, well, that's... Uh, <laughs> I hear me going, uh. <laughs> that's, it's not playing. Um, well, good. Because, you know why it's not playing? Because it, it was never said. It's not... Because you can't play something that was never said. It's not playing? Uh, no, it just says, uh... Now, who is Is that me? Uh, can you play it from in there? Do you know where it is? What's, the, what's but, it called? But it, it, um, Brian 500 in the audio vault, it's not playing. It's been cut. Uh, I think Brian might have sabotaged that's it. That's all that's you, playing. You, it's, labeled, it's labeled Conway and Randy Shanghai Whitman for 500. That's what it's labeled. <laughs> I heard it this afternoon. I'm going to edit it right now. I'm going to trim it real quick. Yeah, uh, ed- I heard, edit, it, I heard it this afternoon. Edit is the key word. I don't know anyone on this program $500. I, oh, I, I give and I give and nah. I give. Uh, that's all it is right now. It, that's me, by the way. I know my own voice. Here's what I got in here. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got, too. Okay. So, all right. Uh, all ladies, right. The jury is dismissed. All right. I guess you don't owe them $500. Wait, we're going to try to fix that tape fix during this all. break. Oh, oh, two fix. Right, when we come back, yep. we're going to play a piece of tape that will force Brian Whitman to legally pay Randy Wang $500. I absolutely don't owe him. And I believe you can take him to court over it.
Good. Let's go to Judge Joe Brown. All right. I think you could do it, and I think you would win. Although, I don't know, making a, 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 a wager in the state of California on something like that might be illegal. Well, that's why I didn't do it. Well, let's... let's. Uh, I, I know the law, Tim. Yeah, I'm sure you do. All right, when we come back, we're going to play this and see if uh, what the audience thinks. Um, but it looks like Brian Whitman is going to have to write a check or pay Randy $500. That's that's my personal and professional view which of, of course, the tape I heard this afternoon. Which, of course, does not surprise me because whenever there's a dispute... And let me underline... Uh, you no, know what, when, uh, no, no, I'm going to get this sentence out. Whenever there's a dispute, you are always on the other side of me. That's you, not true. This, the, uh, in this case, I have to be because... The audio tape is is killer proof. I never. It's going to be. It's wildly damaging. I, I never said it to your to your side. I don't believe I ever said it. Uh, well, you don't have to believe. When I come back, I'm going to play it for you. Yeah. Why don't you guys go edit something and together? Why don't you guys go Shanghai? Me we're not the- editing something together. This actually happened. <laughs> All right, uh, and then at 10 o'clock tonight, Malibu Dan's coming in. Well, Look at that. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, folks. Yeah, it's a big night here. We got news at 9 o'clock. And when we come back, we're going to play this tape of Brian Whitman, and uh, the audience will decide whether he has to pay $500 to Randy Wang. Oh, Jesus. It's Conway and Whitman, and we're live on 97.1 Free FM. Merry Christmas.